Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome into the Sports Fanatic News Philadelphia Phillies series recap as we unfortunately lost a, Phil- a series um, against those, um, I almost said New York Giants, but San Francisco Giants that are managed by former manager Gabe Kapler. But we were able to prevail with the stud muffin that was behind, is behind me right now um, in the <laughs> final game of the series. But we'll get to that shortly, um, as now we have to recap, unfortunately, the first two games, um, which in the first game, I can literally sum this game up in probably two minutes max, because it literally came down to Chase Anderson was solid again through four. He's got removed through four two times. T-Mac talked about it pregame, how he got a, the only reason he got removed the one time is it was a seven-inning game. Otherwise, there's no way you would have removed him through four. This time was because you wanted to go to a pinch hitter thinking you could drive people in. Well, guess what? You went 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. So you couldn't drive anybody in. So that didn't even end up working out for you. Luckily, David Hale looked brilliant in that game and uh, pitched two uh, clean innings for you. And so did Coonrod Kinsler. And then Romero had his best outing of the season. Um, so your pitching did perfectly fine in this game. That This game's literally just summed up to hitting just absolutely flat out. There's no other way to put it. Sucked. You could, like, you just, <laughs> you just couldn't, you matched them for hits. But you couldn't get that key hit. Where that's been the Giants all season. The Phillies have a better team batting average than them, but the Giants, for some reason, are just that weird team right now, kind of like that Twins effect. They just hit home runs when they need to, and they're otherwise they wouldn't be winning games because their pitching is doing solid, but their offense as a whole doesn't look very pretty. Other than they hit home runs when they need to, and that's what happened in this game. Belt hit a home run. Um, your offense couldn't do crap. And then you had good pitching again from Anderson, and the only reason you took him out after four was because you thought you would actually get offense via a pinch hitter, and that just didn't happen. Yeah, no, I I think this is what we've seen a lot so far this year. Take out the next couple games that we'll get into, but it's been a story of leaving runners on base, and and here, obviously, you get shut out, so that's what you point to. Well, left on base was 11 people. We were 0 for 8 with runners and scrimmage, and left on base was double digits, which I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of our games feel like they've been near double digits people left on base. That's what I'm saying. That's been the story of the season so far. Whether we win or lose, the story's been the the, the ability not to score runs. And you look at this lineup, and, and we'll get into it. I'm speaking of up until this game. Obviously, things changed today. Mooney acted well. But I'm going to talk about up until this point in the season of the 16th game when we were 8-8. Eight and eight. You're, looking at, you're looking at this lineup you're throwing out there. You're looking at basically a, a six, seven-man lineup like – it's like playing like five on two in, in basketball or something. Like you look at down this lineup, you have at the time in this game it's Mickey Moniak, but you can also point to Roman Quinn and Adam Hazley at the time. You went 13 games, I think it was, without a hit from your center fielder. Like th- th- at that point in time, more teams were getting more production from their starting. I might pitchers. be wrong on this, but I think it was 0 for 20. It was either 26 or 28 before Moni yeah. got back. I think yeah. it was something absurd like that. So you're, you're looking at you look around the NL. I think I read 11 of the 15 NL NL teams were getting more production from their starting pitcher, starting pitcher, <laughs> and the Phillies were getting. We were for a period the, of time too because of the Wheeler yeah. game. We were for a period of time too. So more production than your center fielder, and then this game obviously he ends up getting a hit, so not that big a deal, but. Uh, made on his uh, MLB debut, so you don't know what you're getting out of him. So we're going to count him as another guy. So in this game, you're looking at, at basically a six-man lineup there. McCutcheon struggling, obviously, to a max right now. So maybe you can even take it down to a five-man lineup. But either way, obviously, a struggling offense. And, and really, th- that was the story of this game. I didn't think Kevin Gosman looked honestly that good. I-, I thought he was all over the place um, in this game. He finishes with four walks, six hits given up. Obviously. No, he didn't look great in this game. I agree. The only thing I will say about Gosman, though, is I see why he's got it going again now because they talked about his splitter and how he throws that split wall to complement his fastball. So now I definitely am like, ah, now I see why he's been so good in the last yeah. year and a half. Um, he can ba- And that just proves that because you're right. He didn't have his best stuff, but that pitch helped him battle through this game. No, no, without question. Uh, so, I mean, again, there's not much to say on this game because of how just pitching duel it was back and forth. Um, like you said, the stories, the guys left in scoring position and on base. 
I mean, pitching was exceptionally well. Chase Anderson, you got to love what you're getting out of him from for right now. And, and like you said, uh, you're going to look at his zero, right? And you're going to say 4.15. That's a little higher than you want. But like you said, you know what? why it is? It's not because he's doing bad. It's because they're not letting him. They're not letting him might be the wrong word because I don't disagree with the way they've taken him out. But they're not letting him get out to continue yeah, to I would pitch. say game like, situations yeah. aren't letting him go deeper. Into exactly. Yeah. So, so wow, it is a 4.15. You look at it, yeah, he gave up the two runs. But like, like you said, Joe, I mean, he made one bad pitch to Brandon Belt. Who obviously made him pay for it and hit a two run home run. But I mean, Chase Anderson, any other game, if your offense isn't struggling as bad as the Phillies were, and I'm a believer, and, and don't get me wrong, I agree with Joe Girardi pitching in that situation, but I'm a believer. If your offense is used to putting up the numbers we expected from this lineup, I don't think you pitch it in that situation because you have faith in your, your offense in the next couple of innings. But I think with the way they're struggling that bad up until this point, that's why you made that uh, decision there. And, and I don't think I, I have a hard time believing anyone disagrees with it because of what's going on right now in this offense and hey it, it didn't work out but i agree with Girardi's decision your bullpen up until that point as well has been pitching extremely well outside a guy or two obviously and david hale continued to prove that and i think uh i mean hey you don't want to lose any games but at least it was close and i mean it's just tough to tough to lose a game like that when you know you could have won so yeah, that's when you have the offense you expect the Phils to have, it's tough to lose a game two nothing. I think that's just the key, really. That that's really yeah. what it is. And you especially when, that. and I hate seeing a, a three for four night from anyone, but especially Bryce Harper, wasted like that. Like Harper to that point was six for six. Uh, if you go back to that Sunday game, he was three for three, right. and then that game he was three for three before he got out in the eighth or ninth inning, whatever it was. But anyway, so you waste that from Harper. You wasted. Uh, I mean, I hate to point to a guy, but hey, you got the big contract in the offseason, so I'm going to go to JT here. He came up in multiple big time situations yeah, and could get done. People on base. So I, I think uh, that that's where you got to point the finger there, and hopefully it works. It changes here soon. Um, but no, it was a tough day. And like you said beforehand, we got to talk about this, and maybe it's now, maybe it's later, but I think you got to start looking for someone to replace McCutcheon in that leadoff yep. spot. Um, but hey, the guy I probably would have put there is now in the IL, so I don't know what you're gonna exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just about to say. The guy I would have put there too is Gene Segura, um, who I find myself complimenting a lot this year, which is actually nice because I used to overly insult Gene Segura at times. <laughs> um but unfortunately he went on the IL, so if he keeps hitting this well in absences, you could try it. I just don't like the pressure of saying Hey, kid, this is like your seventh major league game by the time they might move him to leadoff hitter. Uh, let's put you at the leadoff hitter. And it's like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I but that, um, yeah. if if he keeps hitting that, well, maybe you can try it. But I feel like he's just better off being a guy that can just stay in his groove. He's hit great this series in his first three. He probably will end up playing second, I would think in the absence more so than a Kingery. Miller will play a good bit, and we'll get to him for the final game, the heck of a final game of the series he had. But I feel like it'll be mostly Maton and Miller because Kingery will get to him in the final game but still exposed his flaws um, when it came to trying to um, solve his issues, which I hate saying since I've always loved Kingery. But the topic we will get to now uh, before we move on to the next game is uh, McCutcheon at the leadoff spot. Um, like you, like I just said, it may be the only other guy I would think, and it's just because of his skill set, speed, bat on ball skill, through the minors has been Nick Maton's thing. He doesn't have the powers, the speed, the bat on ball gap, uh, ripping it down the line and using that speed like we saw to get to third when the guy throws it home uh, on a double, but it turns into him being able to move up to third or a nice play there. And we've seen his awareness flipping the ball to second uh, when he knew you could still get the out at first base, making a nice diving play in the second game. Um, but it's still tough to ask a rookie to move immediately up to the leadoff spot in, in his first handful of game. At this point, I don't want Harp there because of his RBI potential. And the same thing kind of goes for JT, I would say. You don't want him necessarily leading off because of his – RBI potential, but wouldn't that probably be just because of his speed as a catcher, almost the default first or second guy right now, just by attributes of what you usually would want in a leadoff hitter? 
Uh, yeah, if you're asking me who I put there with that Segura, I think I'd lean Harper, if I'm being honest. It gets your best player uh, more at-bats. It gets um, a guy who's been hitting home runs. Yeah, he might not be driving a guy in now, but he'll still get a solo home run like he did in today's game. Um, but I'd say you jump Harper up there. You follow with Harper, Hoskins, move JT up to three. I have Alec Boehm four. Then you'd go... I guess Miller stays in five like he did today as he had a good um, solid be, performance. It'll be whoever's in. Miller could probably bat five. They might put Nick five, but if he's in, you would see if they move him all the way up to five because I feel like second once Didi comes back, which Girardi said he thinks will be Friday, uh, yeah. will be between Miller and uh, Maton. So I don't know if they'll always put Nick at five yet, but, yeah, I would agree with you. Miller would probably be at five. So... That's what I think you're looking at there. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm confident in Miller. I think he was a good pickup to have go in for short stints. I don't, we don't want him as your overall starter, but they put him on for more. It seems like they think it's going to be at least ten days, but it's a mild strain for Segura, so hopefully it's not much longer. I think Miller and then Mayton impressed in spring. Joe wanted him to go down. He talked about it in post game, work on some things, and he's really liked what he's seen. He's been mighty impressive uh, in the first three games. He was talking about in the post game for this for the final game of the series. So I think you could tell he definitely worked on exactly what they said, going with the pitch, not trying to go always towards the right side, but going up the middle more, going to the uh, left side of the field more. And um, you see that a little bit um, from him thus far. So I think it's been good to see. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think that lineup, you might have to lead off Harper. I just hate leading. I've always been somebody when someone has that much power, <clears throat> it's like, I just don't love leading them off. Like, I was okay with – that's why, like, I've always loved Charlie Blackman as a player, and he's been a great leadoff hitter. But he does it so well where Charlie Blackman somehow just man manages to get 85 to 90 RBIs, even though he's on the Rockies, in the leadoff spot. But but normally you get less where my concern would be if he's in the leadoff spot, how many op opportunities would he come up with if Moniac doesn't get hitting – like he had the one hit in the third game. And then if you move Maton up in the order and you put other guys down, whoever that would be, like when the Quins of the world or whoever are in, like those guys don't consistently get on base. So how many guys are going to be on base for Bryce? That's the only thing I'm concerned with where JT had that one bomb homer. But um, this year, this far has looked like he's been more of just hit hitter in general and not as much getting those homer swings yet. If you lead him off, you're not missing at like that 40 home run pal potential at the leadoff spot. Yeah. No, I hear you. that's all it is for 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 me with that. But uh, we can move on into the second game now, uh, which, um, <laughs> yeah, this was not a, a fun <laughs> game to, <laughs> to um watch at all. Let's just say this is where it stinks to be a reliever. Uh, yeah, this was not a fun game to watch at all. I mean, Wheeler pitched all right. He pitched five and two-thirds, four earned runs, three uh, baseballs, and six strikeouts. But he gave up three home runs, which was the big bugaboo uh, there, which is how the Giants mainly scored. Then Coonrod did great against his former team in one and a third, giving up nothing. But, yeah, you just hit it on the head. Uh, you always have a struggle game every now and again. Unfortunately, it was in this game uh, for the Phillies. Um, Malcolm – or not Malcolm – <laughs> Connor Brockton. Oh, Malcolm Bro oh, Connor <laughs> Basketball. Brockton. <laughs> Connor Brockton struggled uh, mightily <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when uh, he came in in this game, and it was the first game he struggled. And uh, it, it happens. I mean, I hate to see it because I was pissed that we lost this game. It was more I was pissed we lost this game. I wasn't pissed at a kid for having his – First struggle bunny game in his sophomore season. That's more what it was. Um, but Dickerson hit a home run that was big esque off of the facing of the second deck. After Lestella off a of wheeler of all people, I guess he came back to his home area and went, Oh guys, I got the big boy power today. Also did that. And I'm like, what is going on out here? These guys hit home runs, but not like <laughs> not like this, where they're just mammoth. Um so that was just an odd game in general, how those guys hit their home runs. They're more liner home run guys, and they just hit mammoth 
uh, shots off of you. But that that was the home run ball. The home run ball beat you in this game, uh, clearly. Um, and Malcolm, or not Malcolm, I said it again, Connor Brogdon. Um, <laughs> God, Connor Brogdon just got beat um, by having his changeup hang and just not having it um, on the day. And that's his main pitch. He's like Madsen, like you compared him to last time. If he doesn't have the changeup going with the fastball, uh, he's probably not going to have too great of an out. Yeah, it happens. And, and like I said, this is where it stinks to be a reliever. Six straight consecutive uh, scoreless outings to open up the season. One bad outing, and just like that, your ERA is a seven, and it looks horrible. Like, if your average baseball fan goes, takes a look at this box score, and he goes, man, this Brogdon guy's got a seven, three, six ERA, you're going to take that the wrong way. Like, obviously, Phillies fans know, okay, like you just said, everyone's going to have that bad outing, but, like, that's where it just stinks to be a reliever until you have the innings to build in to, to kind of bring that back down. Um, but, no, like you said, yeah, everyone has a bad day. I'm more disappointed here in Zach Wheeler. Uh, again, I mean, I guess that goes for him, too, but. You build up that 4 nothing lead with your, your second-best pitcher on the mound there, and he's not able to get the job done. He walks three, gives up three home runs, like you said, five hits. It's just a lot. And obviously he's been pitching well this year, so I'm not too worried about him. It's just like it's just the way you lose it. Like, for say, like, Zach Wheeler comes in, he gives up four runs, the Phillies go down 4 nothing. It's like, okay, bad day. We'll, we'll, you we'll were up on. But, but, yeah, you're the one up 4 nothing. So that just makes this, this loss look so much worse. Your bullpen's been so good all year, and it's like, okay, this has finally changed from last year, and then, bam, snap of a finger, just like last year, take a tough loss because uh, of the bullpen in the eighth inning, and then we'll get there today, but then it happens again the next day. Uh, obviously, the result's different, but you Absolutely. give up the eighth, eighth inning lead again. So we'll, we'll see what happens again. I think it's just one. I got faith. I think Brogdon will be fine. He'll bounce back. Zach yeah. Wheeler, I think he'll bounce back. I do like Sam Kroonrod, though. Um Pitching very well again, having another scoreless outing there for him, and I think it's huge uh, for him. I mean, I think he gave up a run or two in his first outing with us, but after that, I think he's been fairly lights out. So Yeah, it's also nice to see him do that against his former club who would have a little bit of a billing on him, too. Where yeah, he can, it, he can hey, that success, that's, what this, that's what this game was, him and him against uh, Alvarez down late in the game. Alvarez beats him, gets the win, though, obviously, and Kapler gets the win in the end. And uh, well, former I Phil- Coon Rogers, he pitched well in this game, but yeah. Well, I'm just being like, Alvarez got the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, you'll find out about another former Philly in the next game we'll talk about. Uh, but um, no, in yeah. terms of the hitting, I thought Matt Joyce is an interesting leadoff hitter. I don't know if I like that, especially, again, he still had Segura at the time in this game. So I think he uh, went off of Florida last year. That might I might be yeah, wrong. No, on I that, get it. He's got some experience. But off, I don't yeah. like I would have rather seen Segura in there over uh, I, I agree. I'm just um, I'm just trying to give a reason why. But hey, Miller gets a start in this game. He bats five again and he's been starting to hit the ball extremely well. I like seeing him get that time. Uh, Alec Bohm picks up two RBIs. We really need him to get going. And then as you mentioned, uh what if they would the, lead him off? Miller, Bone? if he keeps hitting, oh. no, if he keeps hitting, because he's not, he's a little like he can get doubles. He has a little bit of speed. Uh, he yeah, has a little. It'd bit be of a weird, bonus. interesting one. Hit, but I just don't think McCutcheon's going anywhere. So, not. I, I just think you're so depleted in terms of now injuries. I uh, don't really have many options. I, I mean, again, here you know here you know what the sad part is. We have options if they pan out to be what they're supposed to be. Like, I would have no issue if we let off Scott Kingery if he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. I have no issues with Roman Quinn leading off of who he was doing what he was Oh, I completely doing. agree, but it, I think have, part of me I have to put on, um, like you see a lot of experts come out of our organization for preaching the wrong mentalities to some of these guys. And yeah. now even Girardi kind of said oh, it out. He has oh, to no, fix you're it. not wrong. I'm yeah. just saying, like, we, we have, quote, unquote, supposed to be. Like, Adam Hazley, I'd have no issues leading him off if he, one, he wasn't did. hurt, and two, if he was doing what he was supposed to do. Or even if I, Mickey was what he was like. Like, he's he might still get there. He's a little whatever. early for me, a little eventually. early for me, but eventually, yes. But anyway, that's four guys that his name No, I was saying if he was what he was supposed to get yeah. to at this point, you could lead him off as well. That, that's four guys that we just named that potentially could uh, could have been leadoff hitters. So. And I said Mickey, by the way, not Nicky. That's what they did. I, I meant Mickey. But yeah. So we'll see what happens. And, and listen, I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, we don't know how long you'll be missing DD. I don't think they've placed him on the IL yet. Correct no, he said, Girardi, like, like I said uh, earlier, Girardi said he thinks he should be good by Friday. So it's either Mayton or Miller, I would think, would then start at second base. Um, where Didi would go back to shortstop. 
because I don't think they're moved DD to second base yet, even though he struggled at fielding a little bit more short this year. Um, because Gene's not injured that long. So I don't know why they would do that. You might as well just keep him that short. If it would be one thing if Gene... Oh, does, does Mayton have any outfield experience? Maybe throw him in center. That's what I was talking about with uh, Zach on PlayStation yesterday. I just said we should just throw him in center because the talk, how the organization talked about him seemed like a potential Brock Holt, like super utility guy. Or throw, or throw Bryce in center and put him in one of the corners. Yeah, yeah. Um, where like he seems like he... I think he has potentially. I would have to look, but... I feel like I'm not driven from watching some stuff on MILB TV. I think he's been in the outfield before, one with Redding or Lehigh, but I could be wrong. But I feel like he has at times since they thought he would be a utility, not just one position guy. If he made the majors, he would kind of be a move around guy, be a good slap hitter, kind of like Tommy Lestel has been his entire career, a good like average hitter. Or if he starts for you some games, great. If not, he's on the bench. If he becomes more than that, fantastic. But yeah. if he could be a guy that's just that great bench guy, either to Estella's level or where Brock Holt was, who did make an all-star game, um, w- that would be um, a nice thing as well. Just somebody that can hit consistently coming in for you whenever you need him and then starting whenever you need him as well. Um, if he does become your starter, then fantastic. Um, but that's not necessarily what he was projected as. He projected more as that great role, a uh, good slap hitter that can just get it done for you. And it seems like that's what he's being. But I'm with you on that 100%. If no one continues to hit in center field, if he thinks he can be comfortable playing it, yeah, I, I would give him a chance if he's hitting it in center field because you don't want that bat to come out of the lineup. And if Miller, who hit a three-run home run in the second game we were just talking about, um, also continues to do this well as we're getting to the third game now, as he had a heck of a day again, you're not going to want him to come out and be able to mix him in a bit too, which I feel like he's had it some experience. I know he's played the corners, but I feel like in the past, Miller also played some center. When he Maybe. Outfield with one of his past clubs. Um, I know he's played in the corners, obviously, but, but, but I feel like he has played some center. So if those guys, you might not get as good a fielding from that position. Nick Maton has looked like a goal goal yeah. four stop in three games. Um, but from that position, you might not get as good a fielding from him because he's not as used to it. And the same would go for Miller, who were both usually pretty solid and or very good fielders at the right spot. But you might get the hitting that would balance it out because these other guys are just really aren't swinging the stick at all. Random fun fact real quick. Did you know Nick Maton's brothers on the Indians? Oh, is Phil still playing? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was looking at Nick's, when we were talking about him, I was on his uh, Philly's uh, bio page looking at him and said relationship brother of Phil. So I clicked on him and he's on the Indians. I yep. thought Phil was done. Yeah, I didn't realize Phil was still in it because he wasn't pitched. This he- year he's pitched in five games, has a 3 8 6 year. Nickname is Spin Rate. Interesting nickname. He's doing half <laughs> decent, and hopefully he can get yeah. it going. You know, both Matons get their major league careers going. Maybe you can unite them if Phil gets his going as a reliever at some point. You know? Absolutely. But I, um, sorry, I didn't mean to get off the topic. I just thought that was interesting. No, but, but we're going to have a fun um, at the end of the podcast. Since it's uh, your birthday, I wanted to throw in a fun league leaders topic just to throw out some guys if you would be surprised at who some of the league leaders are early on, just going, wow, that guy really is one of the league leaders. Wow, what, where did that guy come <laughs> um, So we'll do that as a fun topic after we get past this third game. But this third game um, is a very um, – up and forth, or back and forth, I guess is what I would say, emotional roller coaster of a game. Um, if you're a Phillies fan, um, because in this tilt, we were, of course, able to go up, which is exactly what we need to see Mickey Moniak do. If he can consistently go with pitches and not get pool happy, that's when you see his bat get going like it was in spring training, and you've seen at times in the minor leagues. He's just trying to pull it too much. He hit an oppo. Oppo Bapo home run, a liner into left field right before the winds and the storm came in like Armageddon. Um, and then <laughs> after that, in the top of the fifth, Mauricio Durban, Dubon, excuse me, um, lined into a force out uh, to Harper, but that did end up scoring Buster Posey. So that's how the Giants got their first run. Then Maton 
who had a very good day today, um, getting three hits in only his third game, going three for four to now be second in the league in batting average, um, bringing his batting average up to 417 right behind, I think it's Ronald Acuna. Um, <laughs> so uh, Nick Maton, Ronald Acuna, exactly what you expected on April 21st um, as your two uh, league-leading oh, batting average. Uh, people, and then you have Ruff, Darren Ruff, the former Philly barks down the tree, get it, and uh, <laughs> hits a home run against the Phillies to tie up the game four to four. And then Alex Dickerson singles on a sharp line drive to Scott Kingery, who I love Scott Kingery, but I must say, if for some reason, was inserted into this game. Um, and then um, Harper was able to hit a home run in the bottom of the seventh to tie it up in the clutch on an outside uh, comeback or slider of all pitches. I can't believe that made it out, to be honest. And slam a, a um, homer on a line that that guy should have caught um, in the seats, but that's not here nor there. Um, then... The Mr. Clutch, this guy right here, Andrew Knapp, the Andrew Knapp, the man, the myth, the legend, Sean News, favorite individual on the planet from Ch- from Chasing the Pennant podcast on the Always Next Year podcast. Now we we'll definitely check us out over there too. Um, Knapp lines one from the right-handed side right down the left field line um, where Dickerson does not have the most strongest arm, accurate but not strong, but I would get the throw in, and Bryce Harper got on his horse and was able to score. So this is exactly how we drew it up, having a a guy come up, go three for four in a game, and having Brad Miller be one of the MVPs of the game too this early in the season going four for five. This is exactly what we envisioned on April 21st, having Nick Maton, Brad Miller and Andrew Knapp be the three stars of a game to help us win the game. Well, Harper's a four star too. So the four stars of the game are Harper, Knapp, Mayton, um, <laughs> and and uh, and um, what's his name? Um, why am I blanking? Mayton and also Moniac even for hitting the home run. So you had the youngsters step up. It's great to see this, but that's exactly what you expected, right? Brad Miller. Uh, Moniac and uh, Mayton to be the reasons you win a game on April 21st. Right. Uh, no, I, I, again, I thought it was another good game here, like you said. I will, here you go. Here's my question of the day, and I, I think it's funny this happened and how quiet all the fans are when Gabe Kapler's in town. If Gabe Kapler pulled Zach Eflin after six innings, only 85 pitches, with how Good he was throwing today. And then with your bullpen giving up the runs yesterday and how much they've been being used, they had a big day on Monday as well. He began crushed. So I'm going to sit here and question Girardi. Like, I, I don't understand why you had a, at the time you have a, a three to nothing or three to one lead. Eflin's or four to one. Yeah, four to one lead. Excuse me. Um, Eflin was throwing pretty well. I, I would have left him in there, to be honest. Um, your bullpen's been used like crazy left and right so far this year. Obviously, like we already talked about, you pulled Anderson after four. And then, uh, obviously, yesterday they blew the game. So you're kind of limited on guys today. I would have left him in there there. And if you have a guy ready, and if he runs into trouble, then you pull him. But uh, with a three-run lead, I'm taking my chances. And uh, obviously, a backfire for Girardi today. Kinsler gives up the three-run bomb, tie game. And then... Uh, I mean, not JoJo's fault, but he gives up the unearned run, um, which I don't know how McCutcheon dropped that ball, but hey, errors happen. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how he dropped that either. But uh, then you bring in Spencer Howard, who looked nothing short of phenomenal. Like I, uh, that if yeah, that's, that's a good. Spen- yeah, that, we need that, to talk about him too. That that's, that's the Spencer Howard we expected. And then you come in and have Hector Neris get the job done. And, and hey, you salvaged the last game. Now you go on, to, you get some momentum for that road trip, and uh, you're go, set, again set to face a very beatable Colorado team. I know we have a, a tough pitching matchup on Friday. Too, so um, hope that gets so, your offense. Yeah, that's why it'd be big to get DD back there for Colorado series. Hopefully, you take at least two, if not more, and then you get the rematch with St. Louis. So we'll see what happens. I'm excited for this next couple week or next couple games. Excuse me. Uh, we'll get our preview out for the Rocky series tomorrow. So make sure you check that out. Um, 
But anyway, sorry. I just think, uh, no, it was important to win this last game. I honestly have my doubts when the Giants took that 5-4 lead. Obviously, so with the struggles I. the offense are having. But, hey, Harper comes through for this team in, in the clutch again. And, I mean, I, let's just talk about Harper for a minute. I mean, what he's been able to do, we're used to him having slow starts. How about this start? Imagine if he actually, yeah. like, turns it up when he usually does uh, in the month of May. after. He well, then he's definitely winning the MVP. Slow April, right? Yeah, yeah. He began our first MVP in Philly since 07. And uh, I, I'd be excited for it. I'm, I'm down for it. And, uh, hey, we should get some of these guys back, hopefully, in the near future. And Gregorius, hopefully, Segura's not going to be out too, too long off that IL. And, and I think we can get this offense back up and running where it, when it needs to. And I think when the weather starts getting warmer consistently, I think our bats are going to turn as well with that. And, uh, again, it's a shame we can't have everyone for this Colorado series to kind of get everyone yeah. the confidence they need. Uh, from that series, but I'm excited for it, and I think this was a good win, a good bounce back win, not only from the loss, but from after you blowing it. But uh, that's pretty much all I have on this game. Yeah, I think you hit it on a head. Uh, 85 pitches, you probably should have just went with the pen um, guy out there as you roll out your starter, and then see kind of how things go and play it by ear as you do it there. The only reasoning I could just think of off the top of my mind is you did have him throw innings underneath um, when they were waiting for the delay. So how much was his pitch count actually at instead of 85 pitches? That's the only thing that I could think would maybe go into it where um, that's the only thought process I would have of why that might have been the case. Yeah, that could be. And I, I didn't get to watch post game today, so I don't know if that's something you already mentioned or anything. Yeah, yeah, he but, did. He said they threw innings underneath, and he would have kept throwing if it went longer because he said to Caleb Cotham, "If we just get four out of him, that's good because we need as much as we can get out of him in this game, no matter like basically when it comes back." So, yeah, I, I guess that definitely, obviously, had something to do with it, but. Hey, you get you move on. You, you take what you got from, like you said, to get four out of them was big. You ended up getting six. And, and we salvaged the series. Yeah, so. you salvaged the series. And, again, you get ready for a Colorado team that should be beatable. You should take care of it if we're um, – should take care of uh, the, in these next games. And, obviously, Vince Velasquez against Marquez is a tough pitching match up there. And then, obviously, we'll hit the weekend. But, uh, no, I'm excited. ready to watch this team battle. And uh, get back into the uh, above 500 category, which we'll see after this weekend. So, uh, but no, I think uh, in all in all, a series you could have taken more, but obviously you didn't. But uh, this is what it is in April. Again, it's a tough way, and now you just got to close the month strong. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, we, yeah, we could be above 500 after the series. I feel like it won't be because we win with this Velasquez pitching, but it could be winning the next two games. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in our preview. But something you mentioned in there too, I have to ask you: Is Spencer Howard pitched um, well out of the pen in this game? Obviously, um, really well, giving you one in the third innings and three strikeouts now to bring his ERA to a three point eight six in two games. Um, after. In his first outing, obviously not going as well on the 13th. Um, he had a 90 area after that, giving up a run against the Mets. But uh, how long, if he does well, say, in two or three more relief appearances, do you think the Phillies are going to keep the Matt Moore experiment going? And how long would you t- wait for it to put Spencer Howard in the rotation over him? Listen, I think the Matt Moore experiment is done. I really do. It's a shame to say, but when you hit the IL stint, you hit the IL stint, and and that's where he is now. And you have two pitchers here, and Spencer Howard, and now Vince Velasquez, who's getting the honor to start on Friday. Hey, if Vince throws five, six innings, and of one to three run ball, that's better than what Matt Moore is giving you. Surprise, but yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Well, I agree, but hey. (laughs) So I'm interested to see if they're just using Vince as more of an opener type style, and they're only going to have him go two or three as a plan, and then just pull him no matter what, whether he's giving up zero or whether he's giving up five. I'm interested to see what they do there in that case. Uh, They haven't really said it yet, to my knowledge, at least. I've not heard anything uh, in terms of that. So we'll see if Vince is a real. Well, you pitched yesterday, so if you go opener and he can go three. Well, I don't know if it's be, Monday. I oh, think. no, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, hell was on the Monday game. So if you 
he should be able to give you a couple innings himself. Um, yeah, so you go Vince three, Hale two. two. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, Howard's got a day off today, so I think Howard will be available on Friday. So we'll see what happens there as well. But no, if Howard keeps throwing well and Vince struggles, I think th- we already know what you're getting out of Vince. So if he struggles, I think the Vince experiment's going to be pretty short too. Uh, and I think okay. if Howard if Howard goes out and say, okay, say Vince goes the first three, gives up three or four, you bring in Howard for the next three, and he gives up one, if that. I, I think Howard's going to get the start ne- next time. Uh, I think it's going to be a short lease for Vin- Vince, if I'm being honest, just because of what you know from already. I think that Matt Moore, I think, you're, you're a little short on lefties in the pen right now. So I think if you give up on that experiment and try moving him to the pen, I don't think that's the worst idea if you ask me. Probably not. But I'm sitting here on a podcast not managing the Phillies, so uh, what do I know? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that would be the worst idea. But that wraps up our three-game wrap-up. Now for the fun game for Andrew's uh, birthday to add into some uh, league leaders here to see if you really are um, – just surprised by some guys that are in the league leaders right now. Did you know former Philly amongst about 7 million other people in the league um, is tied for second in home runs? Uh, the Buffalo, Wilson Ramos, coming in at six home runs this far on the season, tied for second place. I, I did. I've been following. He's, he's actually been pretty, hitting pretty well. Uh, I guess I can't say for sure I knew he was second in the league. I didn't know he had six home runs already. Uh, as he's been a fun early watch there for the Tigers and, and Tigers fans. And hey, it's always I always liked him as an offensive catcher. His defense has always been the issue. So he yep. might be that Victor Martinez that just makes the last out of his career from the DH side. No, that that's a very good uh, observation. That is a very good observation. Um, in terms of not necessarily being in the top five in league leads, but because he's really worked on um, getting back into shape himself and really working on becoming more of a contact hitter. Did you know Vlad Guerrero's average is all the way up at 368 um, with 11 RBIs to put him in 10th place to start this season? No, good for him. I, I think we all know the what he was doing in the offseason, getting better shape and everything. So I, I think it's always great to see a guy get rewarded for, and I say rewarded, but he's not really being rewarded. He's going out and putting in that work, and it's showing. I think that's the better word. It's always good to see the work shown when a guy succeeds like that, and that's what he's doing early on in the year. And, hey, I, I, he's a fun guy to watch, so I hope he keeps it up. But uh, him and uh, Trout there in the top five or top in the average is always fun and top something you, you expect there from those guys. Yeah, um, and then another guy, this is more of just a reaction on him, uh, the Yerminator. Uh, Yerman Mercedes coming in, only having one major league at bat before, and now just becoming a major KDH to start the season at four homers, 12 RBIs, 390 batting average. Uh, what do you think of the Yerminator? It's unbelievable. It's un- It really is. I mean, what this guy's done, the start his uh, MLB career has been incredible. I mean, you look for the young guys in the league who are going to come up and make big names, and he's doing that. He, I mean, like you said, uh, coming into the year with one uh, bat, I think you said, and he's already doing this for a White Sox team, which you expected uh, offense from like every other guy in that lineup. And once they all get going, including him, it's going to be an incredible team to watch. No, that's entirely true. Yeah, he's dominating. And then obviously someone... 40 strikeouts, uh, no walks. This is just a reaction one. 0.37 ERA to lead the league right now. Corbin Burns, uh, that's probably the most historic thing and one of the most ridiculous things I've watched in my lifetime, honestly, right. in the game of baseball. What are your uh, quick thoughts on him? I, I mean, uh, did you say 40? What did you say? 40 strikeouts, no walks? That's no, just, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's unheard of at this point. <laughs> like, think about that. So his his whip is just coming from the hits, and in that he's only giving up eight hits and uh, four starts. I, I mean, so you look at that. That's only two hits a start. Like, that's incredible from a guy. I mean, listen. I think we all had uh, people had expectations. He was supposed to be a good pitcher, but I mean, I don't think anyone expected this good from him. So I mean, what this guy's done is just incredible, and we'll see if anyone's able to figure him out at any time. But the fact that his ERA is 0.37, and he has a loss on the his year. That's got, that's got Jacob DeGrom vibes all over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his cu- his cutter is absolutely 
filthy Corbin Bur- He has speed on it, and that thing, like, one time it's somewhere, and then you're like, what in God's creation? Right. Um, so, yeah, his cutter is absolutely filthy. Um, our second to last guy to round out this, and this will be a fun thing. I wanted to start it on Andrew's birthday because I thought it would be cool, but we're going to round out some of these, which is fun overall topics of teams that are surprising us or players that are surprising us. One guy we have to address, I guess he just hated Philadelphia. Um, tied for first place for people that don't know as pitching win leaders thus far in the season is none other than the bearded wonder, Jake Arrieta. Um, he has three wins on the season this far, so I guess he just hates us and really much like Chicago. Nah, I think it's going to even out, for being honest. I mean, you look at what he did with us. He had some good moments in the beginning part of the year, and we kind of saw it fade off. We'll see if he's able to stay healthy and all that. Listen, I hope they got as well. I've always thought he was funny at times. Was he a little excessive at times? Absolutely. So we'll see what he's able to do for, for the Cubs full-time this year. And if they want to be contenders, they're going to need this from him. But, uh, hey, Jake, uh, Jake the Snake, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's starting to do some stuff good. Good on I'll, him. But I'll tell you what, real quick. On a surprising picture while we're on these guys, another guy with three wins – I mean, I don't know if you followed him much, but let's head over to uh, Canada with the Toronto Blue Jays. What Steven Matz has been doing has been incredible. Uh, He left the Mets, and he's finally turning into that pitcher, I think, that uh, a lot of people expected. I mean, a 3-0 record, 1.47 ERA. Uh, Hey, he surprised me. He'd be one of my most surprising players. No, I completely agree with that. We mentioned him on the – Overtime heroics of baseball um, podcast, Cheap Sheet Shatter. I was on because Max, a Mets fan. Um, so uh, we brought him up since he just decided to really go off there. And I think it was a change of scenery. That's what he said as someone following the Mets his whole life. Yeah. Too. He felt like he, even though he's from New York, he wasn't necessarily going to get it done in the New York spotlight where going somewhere with less pressure in a market like Toronto, when you're not even playing in Toronto, you're playing in. I think they play in Dunedin, and then you're eventually going to move back up to Buffalo. Um, so you really have even less pressure there. Yeah. It's nice to really see um, what he's able to do and come back. I definitely um, would second that when it comes to him. Um, another guy for me I just like as a guy who helped the Kansas City Royals win the World Series in uh, 15 there, excuse me. Is Danny Duffy with a point fifty ERA? I don't think that'll continue, obviously. I think he'll be at somewhere in the threes at the end of the season. But if he can bounce back and stay healthy and have a good season, that would be nice to see because he was a pitcher that always just seemed like um, – I've seen a couple interviews of him, just like one of those guys you always want to cheer for type guy. And it's nice to see him uh, have that nice start to the season. And their team in general – um, have a pretty good start to the season when they're not even hitting that great overall. Um, they're just having good key um, plays contribute to their wins to get them to. It was nine and seven earlier in the day uh, when we were doing the other podcast I did. So that's just a cut, another guy for me. Matt, with that question, he's a, a lot of fun to watch. And congrats to him for that thousand strikeout. I think was the milestone he reached the other day. Um, but no, always fun to watch him, and I'm sure if he continues that, his name will be thrown in the mix for guys at the deadline. But no, yeah, that's those are the guys I got as well. So, uh, fun start to the MLB season for sure. Yeah, it's been a fun start. We thank you for joining for our Philadelphia Phillies versus Giants series recap, where the Phillies salvage the series and giving you some league leader um, info and news at the end of this one as well. We hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Let's get those subscriber numbers up, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate it. For Andrew, I am Joe Borg. You can follow him at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter and me at JJ Borg 26. Everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant week. And go Phillies. Let's bring that ring the bell energy into Colorado. (laughs) Peace out, everybody.